Hi everyone, I'm Karen and welcome to Floss Tube number nine. Can't believe it's been nine already, but it is. I uh, wanna welcome all of you. Um, some of you may know me as a quilter and a quilt teacher and an author, which I am. And this channel is about quilting, but it's also about my stitching. And if you are wondering when did she start stitching, take a look at video one, um, the floss tube one. Kind of explain that because I started stitching about the same time I started quilting. So I've been doing it a long time, but set it aside for a while while I was focusing on quilting and came back to it recently and, and just love it, just like quilting. But what we're gonna do today is talk about stitching. Toward the end of the video, I will talk about the quilt that's behind me. That's one of my 3D cube quilts. And if some of you have ever been in any of my lectures, you might wonder, how come we haven't seen that quilt? Well, that's because this particular quilt really never left home. So we'll talk about that later. So in these videos, I will be sharing some quilts with you that you've never seen from me before. But let's focus on stitching because this is my floss tube channel and I have been working away. I have two finishes to show you. Uh, as far as what's been happening around here the last two weeks, we had red bud winter. Oh boy, <laughs> did we have red bud winter. And that's, um, Kind of a phrase that's used we live in middle tennessee it's a phrase that's used to describe cool downs or mini winters because um, we bounce around all over the place as far as uh, temperature in the winter and we in the last two weeks have been really cold at night i think six nights out of the last seven i had to cover everything because we were down in the teens but the daylilies survived um, the new growth on the hydrangeas did not. So hopefully they'll regenerate. And the garden pictures I showed you last time, I didn't take any new ones because they're still itty bitty, but they're okay. So in another two weeks, they should have some signs. The lettuce is looking good. I should be able to pick that in uh, maybe another week, but I'll, I'll share pictures of that in the next uh, floss tube that I do here. The last one I was like, here they are. And this week, here they are. So. <laughs> You know, wants to see that. But that's what's been happening around here. In the few days we've had some warm weather. Uh, warm weather in the spring always makes me want to spring clean. And I know some of you are like, no, not that. But uh, it just makes me want to clean things out and clean up. So today, actually, I spent about three hours deep cleaning uh, one of the rooms in our house and doing windows in there. And Boy, you don't realize how dirty things are till you start moving things and vacuuming. And it's like, ooh, do I want to do more? But yes, I'll do another room another day and just take it uh, a room at a time as I spring clean. But let's talk about stitching because I have two finishes that I'm excited to share with you. I'm going to show you a new start and um, some market haul and a few other things, but let's look at the finishes. So you saw this in the last floss tube last, uh, well, two weeks ago. And this is one that I started, I think it was last summer, thinking, oh yes, I will have it done in time for <laughs> fall. No, but I'll have it time, done in time for this fall. But this is October 31st by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I love, love, love this. Oh, the bird, the white pumpkin, the stars, the braids, everything. So I did this one on 40 count doubloon and used the called for flosses. And this one calls for four DMC and two looks like two weeks. Nope, two gentle arts. So here it is. I'll show you the picture again. And I'm trying to decide how to do the finish. I really like how it looks in the frame. So I may do that. But here it is. Oh, I just love that. Let me get close. Look at that. It is so nice. Love the linen. Love the threads, 
Just love everything about it. So was debating on a flat fold or a frame and I just really like, look at that black frame it's in. I think I might look for something like that. So this I actually started, you know, I pulled out two weeks ago because I was going to demonstrate the tail hiding tool, which thank you for your comments on that. I'm glad it was helpful. Once I started using that, it's like, ooh, this is a handy tool. I'm gonna keep this handy whenever I stitch. But I pulled this out because I had some tails to hide. And so once I started working on it, I thought, oh, I might as well just finish it. So it took me about a day of stitching and I was finished. So that is one of the finishes. And the other finish took me a while. Let me set this. Uh, let me set it over here. The other finish I started working on on January 26th and worked on it the whole time except for that little bit I did on uh, The Raven, October 31st. Worked on it the whole time, could not put it down. Enjoyed it so much. So I was pretty monogamous on that. And in honor of the finish, you'll notice I have some of my little bee skips that I collect up there. And that's in honor of finishing Humming of the Bees. So that was one I worked on quite a while and I did it, let's see, it was called for 36 count velt by Picture This Plus, but I did it on 40 count fiber on a whim parchment. Now let me show you the cover because the linen I picked is pretty close. It's a little darker. And because I chose a linen that was a little darker, that meant I needed to change a few threads, which I'll go over with you. But I want to show you, oh, it's so pretty. And I will be framing this or getting it framed. Let me see, can you see? Yes, I'm gonna stand up so I can see what you're seeing. There it is, humming of the bees. And what the changes that I made, I made a couple changes the used all the called for threads which were a combination of gentle arts um, weeks i'm looking at my list here weeks uh, and classic color works it also has dmc options but i chose to do the hand dies because i had a lot of those on hand but i had to make a couple changes where are my notes <laughs> oh here they are Okay, here they are. So Harvest Basket, when I stitched that, it was almost the same color as the linen. So I looked at my threads picking the same color, just a little darker. So I changed that to Old Oak Basket. And Putty also disappeared totally. So I changed that to Green Tea. And Putty is used quite a bit in this pattern. So that was an important change because I really wanted to see those stitches. And Sage changed that to oilcloth. And again, looked at my threads, kept in the same color family, just a step or two darker. So it showed up. So let me show you, hold that up again. And I did make some other changes and I'll explain why. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna stand up so you can see. So you can see in the alphabet, some of the changes in there. And just holding it up so you can see now, what I found was when I was working on it and I'm not quite sure when it happened, but I think, let me see if I can hold this up and point. We could change camera angles, but that's going to take me a little while because I'm not in my Zoom studio. Ah, this will work. All right, so the section over in here. I think when I came down here, no, I came this way. Came down here to start the roof and all of that. I think I miscounted this border not miscounting the border, but I think when I dropped down, I dropped down one over this way too far. 
because what happened is it left me a big space, which was fine, except then I had to tweak the border. And when I got to the right border, let's see, right, yes, this border, I had come over here and I had to change that a little bit. So what I did is I looked at the motifs and just extended it and then down here tweaked it. So these things, let's see, was that the right corner? Yes, because this corner was fine on the border. That was fine. But the changes that I made was, let me see, I think I added another motif in here to fill the space. Yep, tweaked the border a little bit here. Added that motif, because I had to bring these over a little bit. None of this changed. Look at these baskets in this peacock. This is gorgeous. This is my, oh, I just love these. I can't say which is my favorite. Yeah, go down to the border so you can see. I think I, did I change? I don't think I changed anything in there. It's this border down here, yes. Sorry, I keep peeking around the corner, but I want to make sure that I show you the changes. Added a little uh, extra motif in here. So I had a space in here, and I could have left it. I could have left it like it was, but it seemed a little bare to me. So this is where you have an advantage if you have patterns or booklets by the same designer. And I know Brenda's always saying, get all the blackbirds. So I've started to collect the blackbirds as um, I'm ordering something. I'll look and see if there's any charts or booklets I don't have. So these aren't all the ones I have. These are the ones I grabbed that I looked at. So what I was looking at is how the designers handled putting something next to a house. You can see it's pretty full. So I thought, all right, I need to add something. So now what I'm looking at are motifs. So I looked at that one and I thought, well, I could do something like that. Or this is one, and this is Sewing Club, which is a beautiful book. If you don't have this, and I'm sure most of you do, but if you don't have this, it's wonderful. It's got instructions on how to do so many different projects, not just the chart, but the finishing. So if you have looked at this and thought, yeah, that looks interesting, get it. It's wonderful. Here's another one I looked at. This is Strawberry Sampler, which I loved the house and the bee. As you can see, I just did the... Um, coming of the bees. So I looked at that and I thought, well, okay, take a look. See that little motif there? So I put that down as that's a maybe to use to fill in my space. This was another one. I just got this a few weeks ago. Flea market souvenir. Can you see the little right here? little uh, vine. I thought, well, that's also a possibility. Another one I looked at is A Heart Remembered. Beautiful house. And again, some of the vines there. So looked at that. I think there's, and yeah, there's a little bit right here too. So I pulled out quite a few of the books, looked at the different projects, how they handled putting things next to the house, and decided since Humming the Bees has a house and a bee skip or a beehive, so did this one. So see that little motif there? That's what I put in mine to fill that space. So let me hold that up again. Actually, I'm gonna show you the pattern and then I'll show you mine because I had to tweak it a little bit because there was a little bit of space. And you might ask, well, why didn't you just take that out? It was seven eighths of the way done. So I, I'm not taking all that out. We will just adjust. And who's gonna know? 
when it's on my wall and framed? I will know, but I'm not gonna say it's wrong. I had it, it's like I tell quilters. How do you think so many blocks came up with so many variations? Somebody had the pattern and flipped something or turned something, it's like, oh, new design. So on mine, I thought, it's so, so much of it's done. It's so beautiful. I will take the motifs from the designers and make it work for me. So I was very happy with how it, it took me some time to kind of figure it out, but I was very happy. So here's the original. And see, this is very close to the house. On mine, there was a little bit more space. So I added that motif. Let me hold it up so you can see. And I debated about bringing it up farther, but I thought, no, I'm gonna just leave it like that. So there it is. It's all finished. I love it. It's beautiful. I am so pleased. The colors, I should be holding it up as I'm talking. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at it. The colors are just beautiful. Uh, the palette uh, that you have in Blackbird Designs, gorgeous. And you might say, well, you changed some. I did. I changed out of, let me pull the notes here. Oh, there's quite a few different flosses. Now, these are just some of the notes I had when I was collecting things, but look at all the threads. I changed three. So, and that's only because they did not show. And especially the putty was very important and the sage. So those I tweaked and I'm very pleased with it. One more look. Let me make sure you're seeing it. Yes. This is actually pretty close. It's a little more golden than it's showing up on the screen. So that, um, those are my two finishes. So I think I'm going to get that framed I've, and the neighbors mowing the lawn. So I don't know if you can hear that, but real life. So I've heard that there is a needle workshop about an hour from us that does a beautiful job in framing. So I think I'm going to take it over there in the next few weeks. All right, so let me show you, check my notes here, I have a new start. It's all that I've worked on since I started it. And oh, where's my book? Oh, I had everything laid out and my book is on the other side of the room. Um, I think I started it within the last week. Cause some of you, if you watched my video that I did at the beginning of the year, I had some plans and around St. Patrick's day, which was last Friday and I, uh, I should say this is March 23rd, but we probably won't upload it till the 25th. So anyway, about a week ago was St. Patrick's Day and I was thinking, I have a Celtic band sampler that I wanna start on St. Patrick's Day. So I have it all kitted up. And then this start came up and that's been pushed aside for right now, which is okay. Because what I'm working on now, and you know, we have to work on things as they call to us. We just do. So I'm not gonna feel guilty about changing plans. I'm just gonna pull this out of the plastic, sorry. Cause we're gonna have some glare cause I do have a box light right in front of me. So this is a chart that we got at Sampler Symposium. So it's not available yet. And I'm not saying I know it will be available but I suspect it will be available perhaps the end of the year beginning of next year. I know a lot of times that happens that whatever is released at a retreat or a symposium is held back, but then it's released later. So I'm hoping it will be, and I'm pretty sure it will be, but don't hold me to that because I don't have any inside information. But the chart is Sarah Millthorpe. 
and it is simply gorgeous. Look at the motifs. Just gorgeous. So we got, uh, of course it, oh, it has, here's the different flosses and silks called for. We got the silk pack. So I have part of one that I'm using right now in here. And then here's the rest of them. Gorgeous colors. And it was kitted with Tabby Cat Creme Brulee, which I think I showed you a couple times ago. And I actually started it around my birthday week, which was in January, on Creme Brulee. And then I started working on Humming of the Bees and set it aside. And I just, it was a little too dark for me. So I switched the linen and we talked about that in the last floss tube. But what I decided, because I was in between a couple, what I decided was, and it just left me. Don't you hate that? Needle and flax. It came back. <laughs> Needle and flax, Thornfield, 46 count. Because the tabby cat that uh, I had selected for the kit, we got to pick our count and I picked 40 count. And then I decided if I'm gonna change the linen, I'm going to change the count. So I changed it to 46 count, Needle and flax, Thornfield. I found some. And what I did, I spent about four days, learned my lesson on the border after humming of the birds. It's not much fun to do the whole border, but I did. Because in humming of the bees, I had to do some finagling, which turned out fine, but I did all of the border first, all the way around. So here it is. So I know it's like, show it already. Did the border and I'm working on, look at that motif. That's the motif I'm working on. So here it is on Thornfield. The colors look like jewels. Look at that. So here's the border. You notice that it's, I just started filling in all the little doodads in it. I'm sure there's a technical term for that other than doodad. But as soon as I got the border done, I had to work on that motif. Look at that. And don't you love the little needle, needle minder? Let me tilt the camera. It's a little teacup. <laughs> that is from Caffeinated Cat, which I have the link I think in the first video, I love hers. So the border's interesting because it's all over the place as far as meeting on the chart. So I had to make one tiny little tweak up there. I was like two threads off and I don't know how. I was so careful double checking everything as I went along and I was see I think two threads off so I did one little tent stitch to bring me up to where I needed to be and that was fine because let me show you again what I really wanted to show see that so I wanted that little kind of V not a V a diagonal line so there it is and they look weird right now because all the little um, pretties aren't in there. But that is Sarah Milthrop, 1834 by Hands Across the Sea. So keep an eye out for that because I'm I'm sure it's going to be coming along pretty soon. Uh, maybe next year, I don't know, I hope so. Because it is beautiful. Um, all right, let me tuck this away. And I wanted to show you some things that I purchased from Market. I got that right here. And I'm going to show you a little demo too on a tool that I saw on Instagram and thought, you know, you know how tools are. But this one is good. 
you know, this is what I mean how tools are. Sometimes, especially in quilting, I would buy something, use it, and it's like, eh, it's okay. And it'd go in my closet and it'd never come out again. And I think that's the way it is with some notions that some we really use and some are like, eh, it's okay. And it depends too on how you work. But this one I really like, so I'll be showing that. But I did get some charts and I was thoughtful about it because oh, there's so much. And I don't know about you, but I got overwhelmed a little bit. So what I did is I kind of, I found it easy to do on Etsy. I would, if I kept seeing something that I liked, I would favor it. And I found that pretty soon it was several of the same patterns I kept favoring. So it's like, okay, those are the ones I'm gonna get because I really like those. Oh, let me check, I have a variety, pretty much of designers, I do. Okay, so let me show you this one. I'm gonna try to do it so the light doesn't cause a glare because I don't wanna take it out. This one I saw and I kept looking at it and looking at it and finally went, okay, you've looked at it and favored it in several different shops. So just get it already. <laughs> so the charts for the most part I got from, I'll put my glasses on, sorry. Uh, do you think I can read my writing? No. Needle care goodies too. I don't think that's right. I can't read what I wrote. I will put it in the description. They has to be needle needle case goodies. That's it. Needle case goodies too on Etsy. They have a shop. They sent very quickly. I had placed several pre market orders with her, and she put them together, which I appreciated so much. So I will put a link to that shop in the description. I don't need my glasses to show you this. So this is one of the charts that I purchased. Yeah, I could do it like that. Plum Street Samplers, Spring Moon. I love the house. I love, I guess I got a thing for houses and bees. And you wonder why I collect bee skips. Well, our last name is Combs, like honeycomb. So I think that's why. But I love the colors. I love the the moon, this rabbit, just everything about it. I haven't kitted it. I'm just putting it um, in my pattern. Uh, I have a basket where I keep all my patterns. So put it there. But that's when I kept going back to and back to. And I thought, finally, you just need to get that. This one, again, the colors, the motifs, it's a little different uh, for me. It doesn't have a house, and I'm, I'm drawn to things with houses. But this is Jeanette Douglas. This is Margaret Meadows, 1804. Look at that beautiful motif right in the center. I just love that. I When I chart or when I kit this, I may make that a little bit darker so it shows up more. I'm not sure, I don't have a linen selected yet. I don't have anything, so that'll, that'll be later. But that's another one I kept coming back to and I just thought that center motif was so graphic and so pretty. And it's got a nice alphabet. It's got that very bold alphabet at the bottom which kind of anchors it. So that's another chart I purchased. I purchased two by Brenda Juve. And again, these are ones that I kept coming back to. Every opening flower. It's got the house. Look at this motif. And that weeping willow. Look at that. It's got some Quaker designs in it. Uh, it does have a bee skip in it. Oh, how about that? Okay. So houses and bees, I guess I'm collecting those. <laughs> and it's got, yeah, it does have a border. It's got a border that brackets each corner and then something different in the other corners, which is really quite fun. So that, oh, just love. Haven't, haven't kitted it yet. 
just are collecting them, but that one, that one may move up. Um, this is another one by Brenda Juve with a needle and thread home, sweet home. I'm just looking to see if there's a bee skip. There's not, but there's a house. Look at that. Look at the flag, the robin. And we're originally from Michigan. We live in Tennessee. I think that's a robin. We live in Tennessee, but the robin is the state bird of Michigan. So just love that. And look how pretty it is in a pillow. So those are the Brenda Duvet. And of course, I'm gonna need to take a drink here. There were two new blackbirds. So I did order those, buy all the blackbirds. This is Birds of a Feather. Here's the original. Look at that. Now here it is. Just love that. There's just something so whimsical about it and fun. So did purchase that. And then also United We Stand. It has three patterns. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've got the scissor keep here, the pillow. And I don't know if that's a flat folder on a box. Look at the flag. Look at it. It looks like it's actually moving. Oh, gorgeous. And the house, the colors. Love this star in here. I'm just going to, I don't want to show you the chart. I'm just going to look to see. Look at the, I can show you this way. Look at this United We Stand pin pillow. That is absolutely gorgeous. So did purchase those and just a couple more uh, charts. This one I got Spring Quaker. Um, maybe I saw someone working on it at Sampler Symposium. Gorgeous. Now I have not started it yet, but I did get the chart. And when I saw that it was so unique, I thought, oh, love it. So I did get the Spring Quaker. This is the Summer Quaker by Lila Studio. Look at that. I mean, the colors. Oh, the summer motif. Look at the lobster. So this one, it's got the Quaker. It's, oh, it's got the New England Village. It's got the tall ship. Again, being from Michigan, uh, if you've ever been around the lakes in Michigan and some of the towns around on the lakes in Michigan, very New England feel in many of them. So that also reminds me of... Uh, some of the places we visited in Michigan. So that's Summer Quaker by Lila Studio. So I don't know when I'll start these, but I have them. And as you know, just like in quilting, where fabric is released and sold and then it's gone, same thing with charts in cross stitch. So you, if you like something, get it because you might be then searching for it, which I have found with some of the things I've seen that are older. And it's like, oh, I, I want to do that. I can't find it. So I'm going to get the things that I keep coming back to. And I have one more. This one I got from Hobby House. And this is Priscilla Wallace, 1829 by Lottie Da. Look at this. And there's just something about it. Maybe it's just the big alphabet and the big name, and I don't know. There's just something about it. So it is done on 40 count straw, and it's only got two colors. So that might be something I do in silk. I don't know. There's also a conversion for DMC and Gentle Arts. But that might be one, if you're thinking of trying silk, it's only got two. And if you do 40 count, you just need one strand. So those are the charts that I purchased. I did get some linen. I know, I got linen last time. Oh, I got some more. I think it's because linen has been so hard to get for a while, and now there's some out there, and it's like, I better grab it because what if it's not available? So, and some of these charts, you can see, 
I would like to have the linen because I've got a lot of threads now that I've collected. So then I could just kit it up if I get in the mood. If you ever get like that, you just all of a sudden, especially if you're watching Floss Tube and someone shows something, you think, I got that chart. Do I have that linen or something similar? And then you can just go ahead and start it if you want. So what I purchased from Hobby House, I got... I'm just kind of sorting them here. So if you wonder why I'm organizing things, my background is library science. So everything is kind of organized. Now, my dog's going to bark. Stop. That's little Benji, big mouth. Stop. Benji. So this is... If I run a whim, what I was saying is you wonder why I categorize everything. Well, library science, that's what we do. So <laughs> I've always been somebody that's very organized. And then you add in a library science degree and all of that. So, you know, but this is fiber on a whim. 40 count milk and honey. I have used this. If you remember the uh, Christmas Tide that I showed you last time. I think this was done on milk and honey. This is such a gorgeous linen and I didn't have much of it left, so I purchased more. It's, if you think of it, think of the color of milk with a little bit of honey. It's very, very good description. i stand up and see. It's a little bit greener than it's showing but it's more of, you think of a milk, kind of a lovely milk color with a little bit of honey. So purchase that. And again, the reason I purchased it is because I used it in Christmas Tide and it was perfect. And I'm gonna just tuck these in. I don't wanna mix these up. This is from Seraphin. And this is 40 count Regency. And Hobby House packages all their linen in these nice bags with the labels so you know exactly this one is a little greener i wonder if i can hold these up so you can see the difference all right so this one is milk and honey this one yeah that's good that one's seraphim so it's just a tad greener and a humming of the birds was on velt which is a little bit green so i thought this is a good kind of green, not, it's not green, but it's greenish tint. Think of a very, 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 very pale mint. Boy, that's pretty. So that is Regency, 40 count. And then I have several needle and flax, which that thorn field that I'm doing for using with Sarah Milthrop, just lost it again. Uh, that's a gorgeous linen. So I don't have much needle and flax, so I purchased a half yard of 40 count all cut because I thought this just looks like a really good all purpose, all round, beautiful linen and it's a little let's see i've got the humming of the bees here yeah that's a good so here's humming of the bees all cot is a little browner and lighter okay let me see yeah that's good you can see it so here is all cot and let me hold it up to, like I said, I don't want to mix these up. This is milk and honey. Just so you can see the difference. Milk and honey is lighter. So both of those are beautiful, but I thought this all cot is going to be very useful. So I got half a yard of that. And again, it's hard sometimes to get needle and flax. It sells out so quickly. So I got two more, 40 count Berea. And I got a fat quarter of that. This is a little more kind of light tan. Now I'm gonna hold the milk and honey up so you can see the difference. 
is kind of a little bit more red, not red, but think of a red brown. Very pale, 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 not brick, clay maybe, red clay. So that's gorgeous. So this is the milk and honey. This is the Berea. So a little bit more of a, I hate to say red, it's not red, but it's got that undertone, kind of a red brown. I think it's helpful um, to see them so you can see the color because when it's really hard to see the color online and it's hard to show it in the video too. This is 46 count Pemberley. Yes, I don't have my glasses on. So. And this is a very creamy, very pale, light, not yellow, but I guess it is. Now I'm going to hold the milk and honey up next to it. So it's paler than milk and honey, but still, well, this is a little bit more brown. So again, a little different, just gorgeous, just a beautiful, beautiful overall color. So Pemberley, so that's in 46 count. So those are the linens that I purchased. All right, this is the milk and honey. I'm gonna tuck that back in its bag. <laughs> if I mix these up, it's all over. All right, so I did get a couple more things. Classic Color Works had some new threads and I think they had four and I only ended up with three. I don't know how that happened. I'll get the other one later. But these are very springy colors. So I picked those up to have on hand. As, as I mentioned in my one of my floss tubes in the car, I'm trying to add to my floss and you know, it would be horribly expensive to do it all at once. So I'm doing it a few skeins at a time. So it isn't quite so overwhelming. Oh, I forgot about this. Good. A couple more things. When I ordered the linen from Hobby House, I was looking through their website and saw this little box by Serju. And it's little. You can see it's just little. And when you open it up, it has their name inside. So you could display it open like this. It stays open. It's a well-made little box, a little clasp. But what I got it for is I just purchased some bulk quantities, like 50 of John James 28 tapestry needles. So I'm gonna keep them in there so I know where they are. So, and plus it'll look nice and one of the little vignettes or displays. So I wanted to show you that because it's just a really sweet little box. And sometimes when you see things online, it's like, what size is it? And I, you know, you're seeing the picture <clears throat> and it fills up your computer screen and you're thinking, is it huge? Is it little? Well, this is just little, but perfect to either open up and display or keep, keep needles in. So this is, I have two more things. This is uh, from, and I will put all these links to the different shops in the description. This is from New Hampshire Shaker Shop. This is a shaker pin cushion. And I have wanted a shaker pin cushion for decades. Why I've never purchased one when I've seen one, I don't know. But I was online <clears throat> looking for some different things on Etsy and this popped up and I thought, I'm going to get one. Look at how beautifully made this is. It's absolutely stunning. See, you can get the size. It's not too big, it's just perfect. Uh, they've signed it and put the year on the bottom. It's beautiful wood. This one I chose red and it's got the spider web design on it. I might get a couple of fancy little pins to put in it or I may use it just like that. So I did get that and I was so pleased. It came quickly, it was beautifully wrapped and protected. So it arrived in perfect shape. So that's my little 
pin cushion shaker box. Now this is something I saw on Instagram. Stitchy Linda, if you don't follow her, you should because she shows beautiful work. In fact, I was watching her progress last summer on living on, let's see, living on little, living on less. I can't remember the chart, but beautiful. Lots of stitching in that one, so I enjoyed watching her progress. But she mentioned Stitcher's Best Friend, which I'm going to demo. I've got to change the camera angle, but I'm going to demo that. Stitcher's Best Friend. And when I looked it up, you know, again, it's hard to get an idea on a computer screen. So I thought, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it because it's a tool she really enjoys using and I was very pleased with it. It comes in a tube, protected, and I envision, and I don't know why now, of course I can't get the tube top off. I envisioned something the size of a knitting needle. I don't know why, and that's stupid, I know, or a crochet hook, but I guess it's because on the screen it looks so big. See, it fits in there, so it's all protected when it comes to you. But what it is, is it's got two ends. It's got a tapestry needle and a little, uh, Just it's not straight, but it's just a little curved piece that you can use when you're ripping things out or unpicking, or I shouldn't say ripping, it is ripping, but you know, we're gonna reuse the thread if we're careful. So you can also use it as a laying tool. You can get it in three sizes. I purchased the 24 inch size. Now I envision myself using this end for taking thread out no, nope, that's the, sorry, that's the needle end. Not sure how I'll use the needle end. I haven't used it yet, but I've used the other end quite a bit. There we go. So I'm gonna change the camera angle and show that to you. So we'll do a little demo on that. And then after that, we will talk about this quilt. So let me change the angle and I'll be right back. All right, we've got a new camera angle, and I wanted you to see how I use Stitcher's Best Friend. And this particular chart that I'm working on here is something I started in January on my birthday starts. This is Live Simply by Willow Hill Samplings. So I've just got a start on it. But I was going to demonstrate on Sarah Milthrop, but I don't want to take any of those silk threads out. And this one, um, I think it's kitted with, uh, let's see, over dies. So I'll just have them set up there. So I'll do that. So if I have to take something out, now and before I show you that, here's another one of the vintage frames that I have purchased or hoops. This is... Let me find it. Hold tight. It's upside down. But it's hold tight, and it's got this little coil. And I find it holds it very, very tight, very lightweight again, very strong, nice patina, feels nice when you're holding it. So that's another vintage frame that I, a hoop, that I enjoy using. And the way I put it on here, you can also flip it around and have it in the well, but I'm going to demonstrate it so you can see it. But, oh, great, and I need to fix that. Oh, that's good, because we're going to take this out anyway. All right, so put the linen in there. Make sure you get your thread not caught. And then when you put it on, don't just try to push it on. Actually, slightly pull this apart. And then it'll go on there, it won't stretch it so much as far as like if there's something, uh, stitches underneath it. So, so if I need to take something out, which I don't, but I'm going to, a lot of times I'm really bad. I'll just use, so you can see that, I'll use the tip of the needle. And what happens is sometimes when I'm doing it, I will split the thread and then I have to end up 
ditching that thread and restarting. Or if I use the eye of the needle, same thing can happen. So this stitcher's friend, you could use that end to hide tails, but I think the tool I showed last week I like a little more. So I see myself using this end. So see how it's curved? That's a good shot. You can see how it's curved. So what I'm gonna do Where you can see it and I can see it. See, I can use that little, it's just slightly angled. It's really quite wonderful because I can get under there, just kind of scoop it. And I'm not taking too much out because <laughs> those were correct. I just want to show you the demo. So it's small, fits in my hand well. Uh, if you need to uh, tuck something away or thread something, uh, you could use that, but I see myself using that end. So this is the 24 tapestry needle sides of Stitcher's Best Friend, and I will put a link to the shop where I purchased it, which was, and of course that's over in the other part of the room now, but Sassy to Stitch is where I purchased it. So I will put the name of this and the shop that I purchased it at. You may be able to find it at your local needle workshop. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to change the camera angle again, and we'll take a look at the quilt. I hope you enjoyed that demo. I have found that tool to be very helpful. And I wanted to mention one thing. When I showed the hold tight, when I was opening it, I opened it gently. Don't, don't you know, really use your muscles and rip it apart. Just gently open that so it will slide over the top. But it is a really good vintage frame if you're looking for some. I know some of them are very pricey. Um, I was able to get this one fairly reasonable. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to find one. But let's take a look at the quilt. And I don't have a name for this. It's one of my three-dimensional quilts that I started making years ago. I think on this one, I was trying to figure out a year that I made it. And it was probably, oh, probably around 1995, 96. And I'm going to point a couple things out, and then I'll have my husband insert a slide so we can get a close-up. But one of the things I did on this one, you can see on the purple, notice that you can look into the block, and it looks like there's a light green floor. The, let's see, same thing on the blue right there you can see as you look into it it looks like a light green floor and the sides and the top are different shades so you get that illusion of depth in it so we'll go ahead and put a slide in here and if you take a look there's different colors that i've used uh, i've used a couple different yellows a couple of different blues a couple of different purples and a couple of different teals. Now, as you look at the block, notice that whatever color family I've chosen, I have a light, a medium, and a dark of that color family. That is going to help with the shading to get the illusion of the depth. Also notice some of the textures that I've used, mostly tone on tones, meaning, a low volume, not a high volume print, not a real busy print, like a big floral, something like that. A little bit more subdued. And the reason I do that is because I wanna make sure that you really see the illusion rather than seeing the fabric. I'm using the fabric almost like paint, painting the design with the fabric. You can see the bottom blue block does have a little bit more pattern. So on that one, um, kind of played with it just to see how it would look and it still looks successful. So these were done with 60 degree diamonds. Any of you that have taken my Patchwork Illusions class used the large 60 degree diamond to create this. 
and just played with the blocks to create the shapes and then use just kind of a neutral background to put them on. On this one, I did use a little bit more of a printed border, which I tend not to do now, but I did use it then and put kind of an inner border, which is some of the leftover pieces, just to highlight the colors used in the blocks. So that is one of my very early, oh, long time ago, about the time I was writing my Optical Illusion for Quilters book. That's when I made this. So about 1995 or 6, uh, the book was published in 97, and it is still available on the AQS website as an ebook download, which talks about all kinds of illusions. This quilt is not in there. Um, but that particular book does talk about different ways to create illusions in quilts. And for those of you that are interested in making the 3D cubes, I do have a Craftsy class. So you can take a look at that. Just go to your, if you are a member on Craftsy, go to Craftsy, put my name in, and it's New Dimension in Tumbling Blocks. And again, this quilt is not in there because I have not shown this quilt before but I will be showing you how to do 3D cubes in that particular class. So as far as what's gonna happen in the next couple weeks, I'll be coming back in two weeks with another floss tube, I think. Of course, I don't have my schedule because it's on my phone, which is recording. I think in two weeks, I'll be back. Um, let's see, I'm pretty sure. I've got some out of town company coming mid-April, but I think think I'll be able to do a floss tube before then. And I did not get a quilt talk filmed, just didn't do it, got spring cleaning and <laughs> I didn't get to it. So I may be doing one of those, but you can check out uh, my website, which is just karencombs.com. If you're curious about some of the quilting and quilt designs that I've done, just go there and there's a lot of information about my quilts. But as far as stitching, I think I'll be working on Sarah Melt's rope. I don't think I'm going to work on anything else. Who knows? I might, but oh, that motif, I, I just, it's like humming of the bees. I'm enjoying it, so I probably would just keep working on it. But that's pretty much my plans for the next few weeks. Um, finish some more spring cleaning, uh, work in the garden, do some stitching. Um, I hope the spring cleaning goes quick. <laughs> it's, I love the results. I don't like doing it so much, but I love the results. So I'll be working on that. And uh, I should have some pictures of the garden to show you in a couple weeks because the sugar snap peas shouldn't be that big. They should be bigger, maybe starting to climb, climb up the trellis. We'll see. We're supposed to get warm, so they might. So enough garden talk, enough... Um, chatting but this is what i'll be working on and i want to thank you again for joining me and thank you for all your comments i love reading them I, I, like i said last time i go back and reread them i just really enjoy reading your comments and we had some wonderful comments last time so if you haven't checked out last week's video please do or last i guess it was two weeks ago, video uh, number eight. Check it out, but check the vid uh, comments. Really enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed today, uh, hit that subscribe button so you'll get an alert when I have another floss tube. And please comment. I enjoy reading your comments. So I think that's it. Um, just like last time, my sewing room is trashed. <laughs> There's stuff everywhere. So I'm going to get it all cleaned up and then go fix dinner. Um, but again, thank you for joining me. And until next time, be well and happy stitching. Mm -hmm.